body and uh, I certainly haven't killed off my 12 year old self you know or my seven year old self or my 16 year old self you know so uh, to give you an example um, you know recently I finally got to go to Paris and I you know I got there and I was just like oh my god my 16 year old self is just so yeah, I'm finally here you know and just like letting that 16 year old self be present to that and have that experience is like finally achieving you know a dream um, I think is part of what makes uh, my experience of life so rich. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, but I think some of the work that I do in my journey and, um, and being more grateful is about letting go of some of the wounds that my 12 year old self experienced or my 16 year old self because then they would get trapped in a story and I've had to rewrite those stories to help each of those iterations of my being heal and be present um, fully in my current self. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Probably not, but that's fine. <laughs> no, it makes sense to you, and, that's, that's, and it does make sense. You know, life is full of experiences and defining moments. How about for you? You know, I want to be a trickster born and just say, but isn't every moment defining in some way? Uh, and sometimes the moments that we think are defining are not. I, I think a defining moment for me was, um, I was at a conference and I met this guy of Aldous Krebs and he does social network analysis. And he did a little bit of analysis of the people who were at the conference. And he said to me, um, you know, you're a connector. You're one of the people who's connected more more of the other people here, and I was like, "Well, you've got to be kidding because I'm so socially awkward. Like, I'm so uh, not good at social connection. I couldn't possibly be the intersection of a whole bunch of people." And he's like, "No, like here's the data." <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of those like, "Oh, my my 12 year old self thinks that I'm obnoxiously socially awkward." And my 30-year-old self apparently has done some work between now and then. <laughs> and it's showing up in the world, and I need to update the story that I have about myself because you know, people get frustrated when they hear me say I'm socially awkward because they're like, well, if you are, what am I? Um, and so I, that was a real defining moment. And then um, uh, similarly, I was having a conversation with this guy, Arthur, Brock, who I've been working with closely and really um, had a lot of respect for his insight, and he said, well, you're such a great listener. And again, I was like, oh my God, my mom just telling me over and over again that I was so involved in my own story of myself that I wasn't a good listener and that I should stop talking so much and, and listen, to now have this person saying, you're such a good listener, oh, I have to update that story that I had from when I was you know, 10 and allow it myself to be this new version that this person is acknowledging, that I respect is acknowledging that I'm a listener. And then wanting to be in that story and like stepping into it and going, oh, I'm a good listener. I'm gonna do more of that, mm -hmm. you know? And so I can see in the years since then um, that I've like stepped into that person, right? I've become more and more um, able to listen to people's stories. And, I still, uh, you know, live in the tension of that. Like, uh, my internal experience is so about me and the experience that I'm having that I don't. Um, I'm not only a listener. And the older I get, the more I think there's value in stepping further and further back because every person has something to listen to. You know, there's just. Uh, so I want to get even better at that. So those are two kind of defining, redefining moments, right? I had a definition of who I was and I had to change it because somebody was witness to me in a way that I was open to. Interesting, uh, briefly, Laurie Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, performance Wonder Woman, uh, said uh, at an event that I was at, we uh, put a build our personalities in a, 
and put our personalities in this very small box when we're young. Mm -hmm. And then when we get older, we're still in that box. Mm -hmm. We have to break out of that box mm -hmm. or make a new box if not, if that's bigger that will, can hold us, the new us. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought of that while you were talking. Because I think defining moments often are things that are traumatized us at one point in time that really made us, was the curse and the gift that really made us recognize mm -hmm. that we are better for the trauma sometimes, mm -hmm. for the, the difficult situations. You, you used the word vulnerable earlier, mm -hmm. yeah. as in our conversation off camera. Yeah. What does vulnerable mean to you? Mm. Well, that's a more recent transformation for me because I was, um, I feel like I've been on a journey to become more vulnerable, although I probably wouldn't have phrased it that way because uh, I think that I thought, as I think most people do, that vulnerability is weakness. And then watching um, Brene Brown's talk on vulnerability and wholeheartedness and shame just like <clears throat> opened the doors for me. Um, and I can see that I was on the path there. So it wasn't um, a complete like 180 for me, um, but it was a release into um, a present self as opposed to a past self. And I, and I liken it to, I think in my younger years, I thought of myself as steel. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I can be vulnerable on the surface because at my core, I'm steel. And um, I'm not going to break. And so, uh, you know, my flesh can be vulnerable, but, um, but my core is not. And now I'm learning to be water because uh, it's about... To me, the vulnerability is learning to trust myself and trust the world, that it's all unfolding as it needs to be, and so um, not to worry about being broken by it or being um, changed or transformed by it, by just trusting that um, what, whatever comes um, is something that's going to enrich the experience that I'm having. Um, and, uh, but I think other people find it really disarming. Um, you know, we're so uh, in our culture, perhaps, um, perhaps other people have had this experience of being, uh, you know, told to be um, bounded, you know, to create walls, to prevent other people from hurting us. Um, and in the last several years, I've been hurt really deeply and realizing that that's okay, that's like, I'm alive, I'm being in my aliveness. The fact that I experience pain is part of the aliveness. Um, so even that is not something to push away. Like, you know, if you put up the walls big enough, you no longer feel, you don't connect. The wall that keeps other people apart keeps you from touching them. Like, all of that is this barrier between us that stops us from getting the things that we need. So vulnerability to me has been the, if I share a little bit of myself with you, you'll share a little bit of yourself with me, and we'll have a sense of connection. And isn't that what we want? We want to have that sense of connection. So why should I protect myself from that? Interesting in, in that reference. I, I, I used to believe I was uh, brought up as a man to be independent, self-reliant, to be unfeeling, to be tough. And then as I grew and I came to understand it, that I had it all backwards. That the people who were vulnerable, who let things in their lives, were the strong ones. Mm -hmm. And that the people who protected themselves were the, the weak ones. And that we had something to learn about being open and vulnerable as opposed to being prisoners mm -hmm. of being normal. 
Because I think the, the normal thing I was brought up to be, and you were brought up to be, was, no, you're not supposed to cry. You're a man. Mm 